We're going to open with a word of prayer. And Miss Carol is speaking tonight. God, we just thank you for the opportunity to come in your house to honor you and praise you, God. We just love you and we thank you for all you do for us and always being there. God, we ask you to heal to those that are sick in our church family. God, we ask you to bless our church family, be with them and anoint them in a mighty way. God, we ask you to be with our world. There's so much evil in this world today that we just need you strengthen the Christians to stand up and fight against the evil and cast this evilness back to Satan, God. We just ask you to bless Miss Carol, God. Speak through her. We love her, and she loves you, and we just appreciate her. Anoint her in the Holy Spirit, in your holy name. Amen.
Thank you so much for the opportunity, for the privilege to be in your house. And Lord, let us remember why we are here. And there's one reason, that is to worship you. And Lord, you never fail us. Like the song says, the arm of flesh will fail us, but you will not. And let us always remember that. Lord, we thank you for this day. It's been a good day because it's your day. And, and Lord, I just, I just, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to you for all of our many blessings. I'm grateful for you to, now, for Carol. She's going to come, Lord. She's going to give us a message. I know it comes from you. And I pray you'll just give her the the calmness, the sincerity, and everything that she needs to deliver the message you have for us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I think I need a stool. Hi, y'all down there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love the Lord. I know you do, too. That's why we're here tonight. And I'm here to give him praise and glory and uh, just let you know what a powerful, powerful God he is. I know that you know that, but I hope tonight the lesson will show you that even more so. The lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 37. It's a well-known story. It's the story of Joseph. Um, and the title of my talk is Father Knows Best. And I hope I don't get in trouble for using that title, but I don't think anybody's going to come and arrest me for that. But Father, no <laughs> Father Knows Best. Um, the story of Joseph is probably one of the best known stories in the Bible. I'm going to start out with just a few facts about the one who we might call the star of this drama. Joseph was the favored youngest son of his father, Jacob. His father made him a coat of many colors to show his great love for him. Joseph was given a gift by God heavenly dreams and the means to interpret them. His 11 brothers hated him and were envious of the love their father had for him. They sold him into slavery to a bunch of Midianite merchant men who were on their way to Egypt. Then they told their father that Joseph was dead. Joseph was brought to Egypt and sold to an officer of Pharaoh, a captain of the guard named Potiphar. Potiphar, I, I don't know the pronunciation, Potiphar. Um, so now he is a slave in Egypt, but God. The Lord was with Joseph and prospered him, and Joseph found grace in Potiphar's sight. Joseph became the overseer in his house and over all that he had, and God blessed everything that Potiphar owned. Potiphar's wife tried to make him unfaithful to Potiphar, but, Jesus, but Joseph remained true to his God and to his owner. Yet Potiphar's wife prevailed in her evil, evil accusations, and Joseph was sent to prison. Once again, God showed favor to Joseph by giving him wisdom in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Soon, he was given charge of all the prisoners in that prison, but God. Two of those who were sent to the prison were the king's butler and the king's baker. They had offended the pharaoh. And while they were in prison, each of them had a dream which Joseph interpreted correctly through the power of God and his spirit. On the occasion of the Pharaoh's birthday, the butler was restored to his job and the baker was hung, just as Joseph had predicted. Then Joseph was forgiven I'm sorry, I should have put my glasses, was forgotten by the butler. If you remember the story, he asked the butler to remember him 
uh, for what he had done, and the butler just forgot him completely. Um, and after two years, the pharaoh himself had a dream that he knew had a deep meaning. He called for any in his kingdom who would interpret it, but none could be found. The chief butler suddenly remembered that Joseph had correctly interpreted his dream years earlier, but God. Pharaoh called Joseph from the prison. Joseph gave God the credit for his gift, and then he interpreted the dream for Pharaoh. Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of ruling over the land of Egypt, the entire land. There were going to be seven good years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. This was the interpretation that he gave to the Pharaoh. Joseph's father, Jacob, sent ten of his sons to Egypt to buy corn. The famine had spread to the land of Canaan. Joseph's brother, by the same mother, was kept at home. His name was Benjamin. When they got to Egypt, the brothers did not recognize Joseph in his Egyptian attire, but he recognized them. The tricks that Joseph played on his brothers are found in chapter 42 through 44, and it's a riot. You need to go back if you haven't read the story of how Joseph, not he doesn't get even, but he plays some tricks on, on his brothers who have no idea who he is. The tricks that he plays um, do not reveal who Ju Joseph is, but finally Joseph reveals himself to them in chapter 45, and by the grace of God, Joseph forgives them. This is where Father Knows Best begins. Joseph tells his brothers to go back to Canaan and get his family and bring them to Egypt because the effect of the famine would not be completely over for five more years. All of Joseph's brothers went back to Canaan and explained to their father, Jacob, otherwise known as Israel, that Joseph was alive and was in fact a famous person in Egypt. God spoke to Jacob in a dream and told him to go to Egypt, for God was going to make his family into a great nation. Now, we are talking about a family of 70 people, which included Joseph, his sons, and his wives. But Jacob believed God. My friends, what happens next is how we know that Father knows best. Almighty God knows best. When the family arrived in Egypt, Joseph told them to be sure to tell the Pharaoh that they were shepherds. Why? Because the Egyptians hated shepherds. When Pharaoh was told their occupation, he wanted them to be as far away from him as they could possibly be put. Where was that place? The land of Goshen. Verse 33 of chapter 46 states, And it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, What is your occupation? that you shall say, Thy servant's trade has been about cattle from our youth even until now, both we and also our fathers. Then Pharaoh will give you the best land in all of Egypt, a land known for raising both crops and for feed for livestock. Here are two descriptions of Goshen. Goshen is a region of ancient Egypt east of the Nile Delta granted to Jacob and his descendants by the king of Egypt and inhabited by them until the Exodus. It was a place of comfort and plenty. And another description is, is as good as that one. Another describes it as good and fertile land, great for crop and livestock rearing. Egypt's Goshen was a well-loved land by the Israelites who took the love of that land in their hearts back to the promised land. Our God is an amazing God, is he not? He brings a family out of Canaan, 70 people, counting Joseph who was already there, that family, and 
He brings them into a place that is a land of plenty for them while they are in Egypt. That is a most amazing thing from an almighty God. And when we say, but God, but God, God knows it all and he's in, in control. And that's really what I want us to remember and take away tonight from this lesson is we have a mighty God. And when you think that you don't understand things that are going on and, and so many things we don't understand, we don't, have to, we don't have to do anything but just trust. Trust God. And Joseph did that all through his life. In, in everything that he did, he trusted God, and God was there for him. Father knows best. And after the death of Jacob, Joseph said to his fearful brothers, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good. To bring to pass, as it is this day, to keep many people, especially members of my family, Joseph is speaking, alive. Folks, when we can't understand what in the world our Father is up to, just remember, Father knows best. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I know that you know best and that you are in our lives we just appreciate you. We thank you for everything that you do for us. I thank you for giving me this message. I thank you, Lord, that you are such a great God. And we just give you all the praise and the glory because the stories that we find in the Bible of men who are in predicaments and crazy situations, you show yourself strong on their behalf. And you're going to show yourself strong to each of your children. We are your children. Every one of us tonight that's in this building, we are the children of God, of God the highest, the almighty God. You are ever with us. You are ever prevailing. You will, we will never stop trusting you in every situation. We can lift you up. We can tell the world what we know about you that you and you alone are to be praised. And we just love you, Lord. We give you the praise tonight for everything that you have done for us. I just ask that you go now with us as we return to our homes. And as this seed is planted, may we trust you with all of our hearts, minds, soul, spirit, head, knowledge, everything. Joseph was a man of God who trusted you in every pitiful situation that he was placed in and Lord when people forsake us like his brothers did we know that you are there and you are working behind the scene on our behalf in every way we give you praise and thanksgiving for what you are for who you are and what you do in our lives thank you Lord we bless you tonight and give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus name Amen. Sure.